from the number one best-selling author of Life Rescripted. You're now tuning in to the Year of Purpose podcast. I'm Zephan Moses Blacksburg. Michael Graninetti is not your ordinary magician. With performances on national and international television, in stadiums, arenas, casinos, and theaters around the country, with Oscar-winning composers and symphony orchestras for NFL halftime shows and major sporting events while surrounded by 70,000 people. For Fortune 500 companies and even at the White House, Michael has made a name for himself around the world as an extremely talented and innovative illusionist and entertainer. He's starred in NBC's The World's Most Dangerous Magic television special, the CW's Masters of Illusion series, and Pop Network's Don't Blink series, among many others. You know, he's also been featured in Fox's Bones series and uh, quite a few others that I think we're going to jump into here in just a moment. Michael's pioneered live magic in one of the most challenging environments imaginable, major league football stadiums, baseball stadiums, and basketball arenas for the NFL and NBA halftime shows. And today he's hanging out with us. Michael, how's it going today? Definitely. I'm great. It's good to talk to you. Yeah, man. So you have quite the impressive bio. And I know we were talking just before we hit record here that you and I both, when we were younger, had an interest in magic. And I know I shared with you that my dad used to give me allowance every week or if I had mowed the lawn or something like that. And I would save it up just so I could go to the magic shop and pick out, you know, one or two new tricks that I could take home and learn. And I think that you started quite young as well, too. Is that right? Yeah, that you and I have the exact same uh, same kind of history with magic starting out. I, I got a magic set when I was five, uh, and I'm really lucky to find to have found magic that young because it really shaped my life, as I mentioned. But yeah, I would save up my allowance, and every couple of weeks, my dad would take me to the magic store, and I would spend hours and hours and hours uh, going through. You know, I wanted to see everything that they had in there, and my dad was very patient. Um, and yeah, it really, it, it, you know, from that point on, I was kind of off and running with magic. Yeah, so, you know, you've taken magic to a whole new level. I mean, obviously, working in the White House, NFL stadiums, and things like this, uh, it clearly was one of those things that stuck. You know, I had so many things in my childhood that didn't really stick and ultimately, you know, moved on past that point. And I think it's really great that you've been able to stick with something so long and still be so passionate about it. Um, How did you get to kind of the stage where you're at now? Now, because, you know, for me, like I went and got these magic tricks and you don't see me in front of an NFL stadium. And I'm sure that it takes a lot of persistence and hard work to get there. So I'm curious to hear just a little bit more about your journey and, you know, what it really takes to get to that level. Well, you know, it it was definitely a process, but it was a labor of love over many, many years. Uh, You know, it was I'm lucky in that I found magic at a stage in my life where I could I was very young. You know, so I could take the time to really study it, to really learn it, and to really set goals. Uh, and and that's what I did. You know, as I grew up, as I got older and older, I would set little goals for myself to have to kind of meet, and and then eventually beat. I would always try and top myself. So throughout my you know early childhood, but particularly as I got into my teens, and and kind of young adulthood, I was very very goal driven with my magic, and 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 it really helped me to create a path for myself to, to push forward in what is an undefined field. You know, there's no real way to, there, there's no real clear path. I think in a lot of entertainment based, uh, certainly performance based, you know, careers, no real defined path in moving forward. You have to kind of, you know, find your own way. But, um, you know, being goal, very goal driven was my, was my um, kind of technique for doing that. Yeah, so this isn't exactly something where you just say, I'm going to go to college for it, and then I'll have a degree, and I get a job doing it, because it's totally different. And so you have to follow quite an opposite path of what many others do. Now, the crazy thing is, it's made you wildly successful. And I know that there are many people that will follow the path of thinking, oh, you know, I need to grow up and go to college and get a degree and just, you know, get a nine to five like everybody else. And they think that that's what they have to do versus you took quite an interesting route and it's, you know, put you on the big screen, you know, in front of many people. And I think that it it takes a certain, I don't know if there's like a special skill or something that has really uh, come about for you throughout this whole process, but is there any one uh, maybe character trait that you think has allowed you to push for, for greater and for more? I would say persistence. You know, there's it definitely, definitely persistence. You know, it's, but like I said, it's a labor of love. I love 
I kind of spring out of bed every day and I'm excited to get to work. I love what I do. So when you have that passion for your work, I think it fuels you. But it's persistence. You know, there's no there's no easy there's no real easy way to do it. It's it's you know, I spent many, many, many years, um, particularly once I moved I grew up in Pittsburgh and once I moved to Los Angeles and basically started from zero, you know, in a new city, I spent a lot of years just knocking on a lot of doors and meeting as many people as I could and, and making a lot of phone calls and sending you know, sending out a lot of letters and um just persistent. I was very, very determined to to move forward in my in my kind of chosen career field. And you know, people ask me, what was your, you know, what was what was your backup plan? Like what else would, would you have wanted to do? And really the, there was nothing else I wanted to do. There was never any, well, if I don't become a magician, I'm gonna do this. It was always what am I going to do to make this goal work? You know, there was always about trying to find a way to to achieve that goal. And you have to be flexible. You know, you have to adjust along the way. You have to. This is a long winded answer to your question. But, you know, it's it's it's. You know, you're always going to find the the as you move forward down a path, you're going to find little roadblocks along the way. So you have to be I think that's where persistence helped me because I was I, it never kind of stopped me in my path it made me figure out a way to, to go around the roadblocks and keep moving forward. So, so after that long winded answer, the one word answer is persistence. <laughs> well, I think that it's important to note that it was, it doesn't seem like it was ever a matter of if you would, you know, move to the next step or if you would do this next big thing, it was just a matter of how and figuring out the steps and breaking it down. And then, you know, much like you said, if that means cold calling, if that means emailing or, or, you know, putting letters out in the mail, then that's what it takes to get there. And I think that this is really a truly great example to show people that this is what it takes because a lot of people think that they can just kind of sit back, relax and enjoy the show and that things are just going to work in their favor and, you know, favor kind of fortunes the bold here, especially in your case. Well, I'm a firm believer that, that people can achieve anything they want to achieve. They really can. Uh, they just have to go out there and do it and they have to be willing to work for it and be, and also understand it's not going to happen instantly. You know, it took, it takes, uh, Sometimes you, I kind of hear the term overnight success, not only about, not about me, but just you hear that in general and you go, you know, I wonder if people just don't realize how much work was truly behind that overnight success. Nothing truly just happens most of the time, most of the time. Um, it takes a lot of work over a lot of, over a lot of years. So, you know, and the one thing I want to tell you too is, you know, I did, I did actually, you mentioned you know, going to college and, and uh, doing a nine to five, I, not the nine to five, but the college, I definitely went to college and I got a degree in marketing because okay. my goal, you know, it's show business. And I knew that I wanted to be armed with, with as much knowledge as possible. So I went to, I actually have my business degree, which has been tremendously helpful in, in kind of navigating the, the waters of show business. Oh, very nice. Because I'm sure there's tons of stuff that you run into as things start to blow up and more and more people reach out to have you, that that probably comes in handy. So that that's really cool to learn. So actually taking a college degree and while you didn't go into marketing, it sounds like a lot of that stuff came in handy big time. Now, I'm curious to hear from you, you know, along this path, were there ever any points in time, you know, it sounds like you were so dedicated to it, but did you ever get to any stage where uh, there were any sort of big losses or big misses and you were just like, wow, I, should I keep going? I, there's never a question of should I keep going. It was just, but there were always, you know, there were certainly, as in anything, there were challenges, there were rejections, uh, you know, there were uh, times of great success and times of, of uh, I, again, challenges and, 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 you know, having to work harder to push forward. And I think you'll hear that from everybody. And I think that also happens in any stage of, of business and any stage of somebody's career. I think, you know, I think the, a popular misconception is, is that you've arrived um, and, th and you just coast. I think even for I hear stories, you know, in L.A. of very known actors still having to go audition for for roles and read for roles. You know, you're constantly having to continue pushing and continue to to, um, you know, stay on top of your field. And that's one of the things that I that I'm very proactive about is making sure that I'm always on top of, you know, what is going on in my field and making sure we're always kind of, you know, doing um the best that we possibly can at all times. So no, I mean, there were never any major roadblock, you know, anything that made me 
you know, doubt my path ever. But mm -hmm. there were certainly challenges and, and, you know, bumps in the road along the way. Now, magic is quite a unique thing to learn because, and here's kind of an example, you know, if I go to school to become a mechanic and I learn how to fix a car, you know, there's there's only one way to put a tire onto a car, right? But magic is something that's so different. You know, your performance is not going to be anything like anyone else's performance. How do you go into a profession like that where there is no set path of just like this is, you know, these are the things you learn and you do all the same things as everyone else? Well, that's actually a very good question. The key to that is putting your yourself, putting your personality into what you do. I've always said you can give 10 different magicians the same piece of magic and you should see it perform 10 different ways mm. because they should put their own personal kind of spin on it, their own personal style, their own personality into it. And that's really um, important. And that's really a focus of what we do. Um, and I say we because I have assistants and dancers and, you know, to do it, to do our show, I, I could never say I because it's not a one man operation. I, you know, I've always got to say we because it's very much a team, a team effort. But, you know, it, it, it's just making sure that it's a reflection of you as an individual. And I think that'll help you stand out and that'll help you, you know, not look like you're one of one of many. I think that's really important. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, is there any part of that, um, you know, I don't know the full process of how you design shows and things of that nature. And obviously, I'm not asking for how stuff is done, but I'm, I'm more thinking along the lines of, you know, is there a part of your personality that you really see shines through in your performances that people would note, you know, if they see your show versus someone else? Well, I think just a very, very sincere love of magic and a very, very sincere appreciation of the audience. You know, I realize that in today's world, whether, whether it's a television audience or a live audience, people have a million other things that they could be doing with their time. They don't have to come to the theater. They don't have to tune into our television show. If they've made a decision to do that, I truly wholeheart wholeheartedly appreciate that. And, you know, I think that when the audience watches our show, I would hope, I would hope that, you know, that sincere appreciation for them and that passion for what I do comes across. And I think people love to see p other people loving what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think when you watch somebody truly enjoy anything that they're doing, I think, you know, it pulls you in. And I, I, if, if, if anything, that would be my hope is that, is that those two things come across to the audience. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it definitely comes off in the performance. If you're really enjoying it, it the crowd's going to be enjoying it too. And it, so just kind of speaking along the lines of that gratitude and, you know, appreciating uh, the people who come out to see you, how does the magic kind of spill over into the rest of your life? And how do you balance, you know, if you're on the road doing shows or things like that, how do you make sure you're taking care of yourself too? Well, it's tough. You know, I work 17 hours a day, seven days a week. So, you know, balance is, that's a tricky thing. I mean, my, my, to be quite honest with you, you know, I, I kind of live and breathe my work. I, I'm married to my work. But that's the balance that works for me. I don't recommend that for everybody unless it really, truly works for you. I think the key is everybody has to find their own balance that works for them. Um, you know, at this stage, I, I just, I love what I do so much. I, I just, you know, I, I just... I'm so passionate about it that there's it's just that, that there's not enough time in the day. The sun goes up and the sun comes down very quickly, and I think, wow, another day is over already. I didn't get done near as much as I wanted to. So, but I think I think still, even with that schedule, I try and you know stay healthy. I try and have enough. I make sure I get rest. I make sure I get exercise. I'm in the gym, you know, five days a week for sixty to ninety minutes per day. I eat tremendously healthy. I, you know, I'm very regimented on my kind of body care and maintenance because it's, you know, it, it's it's part of, you know, if I'm not in good shape, I can't keep up the pace that I would like to keep up. So that's how that's basically the balance that I keep is I make sure I stay healthy, um, you know, and and but I push ahead very hard with work. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine the toll that it takes on your body, even performing in the manner that you do, you know, like, it, I feel like the NFL football players are exerting a lot of force and energy on the field. But even your halftime show is probably uh, exerting just as much energy. Oh, I'll tell you, you know, you, the halftime shows typically are about seven minutes long. 
which is not that long, but you walk off after that seven minutes and you feel like you've just run a marathon because it's just, you know, it's so much, you're right. You hit the nail on the head. It's so much energy you're exerting out there. And it's so exciting out there. I mean, it's just, it's such an adrenaline rush and I don't care how many times you do it. Every time you walk out into that field, uh, you know, you get the chills. I mean, it's, it's just an amazing experience. So yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it takes a lot out of you, but, but what a wonderful, uh, you know, what a wonderful experience. Yeah. Now, do you remember the first time that you went up in front of like your largest crowd yet? Like I'm sure, you know, as a kid, I was always performing for aunts, uncles, cousins, family, you know, but like never in front of a hundred, 500, 10,000 people, you know, do you remember what that experience was like for you? Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's been, well, so there are so many ways, that there, there's so many little benchmarks that I could think of in, in relation to that question as far as different audiences over the years. I mean, you know, everything from my first audience when I performed for Show and Tell in kindergarten, I remember that like it was yesterday, <laughs> I was a very shy kid, um, to my first stage shows when I was in high school, um, to the stadium shows that we started doing about 15 years ago. You know, each one, um, you know, has its own they're an adrenaline rush and they're, you know, I don't get nervous. I get, I get excited to get out there. And once we're out there, it's, it's calming. It's comfortable. You know, it's, 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 I'll give you an example. We just did the Arizona Cardinals halftime show a couple months back and it was a 60,000 seat, uh, you know, stadium. It's a pretty big place. And in rehearsal, you know, there's nobody there. We're rehearsing the afternoon, but still it's a, it's a very vast place. I remember thinking, I should be nervous out here. Shouldn't I be nervous, like standing out here? But I was so calm um, because of the love of what I do and the excitement of, of of what I do. So, you know, that's always been my experience. It's I always felt so good to walk out in front of audiences and kind of share my magic with them. You know, but the stadiums, kind of to get back to your question, they've always been a thrill. I mean, the first time you walk out in front of a stadium audience, it, it's again, you get chills. You just it's it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, I wonder how that would spill over now other people's lives if they realize that, you know, these 70,000 people showed up for me, you know, like, we, we get so afraid to go up on stage and to get out there and to express ourselves, whether it's creatively or in any other manner. And, you know, we worry about what other people are going to think, but it's like, they're there to see the show, you know, like they showed up to see your show. And so I just wonder how that would play out in other people's lives if they just realized that and instead of the nervousness of, oh my God, there's hundreds, if not thousands of people that are here watching me, if they could change that in their mind. Well, I mean, I think you, you said the key thing, it's changing it in their mind. I mean, it, it's a self-imposed kind of um, roadblock as compared to a physical one. If you just go out there and remember that, you know, there is nothing bad that's going to happen you know the people want to see whatever it is you're doing whether it's music whether it's magic whether it's whatever you're doing whether you're speaking about a topic um you know, don't put the negative in your head go out there and 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 you know be excited for where you are be appreciative for where you are and realize that there's nothing i mean you know getting up in front of sixty thousand people is no less risky than getting up in front of one person you're doing the same thing you know, I would do the same magic for five people as I would for 60,000 people. So, you know, don't put the limitation in your in your mind that, uh, you know, oh, it's scary going out in front of all these people. Just go out there and do your thing and, and it's going to go great. You know, I always try and tell people to keep, you know, think, it, you know, as cliche as it sounds, keep the positive in your mind. You know, don't put those limitations in your own mind um, because it's real important. You know, and, and, it, it, and, you know, I can honestly tell you every time we've gone out in front of the stadium audiences, um, they've been great experiences. There was never any reason to be nervous. They've been, the, the audiences were wonderful. Uh, it was an exciting, we were so excited to be out there. They were great. I mean, they were great. You know, it was a great experience for us. So had we tried to put all these negative limitations on us, we would have been kind of robbing ourselves of, I think, the enjoyment of it. So I think it's important that people realize that. Yeah, I think that's extremely important. And so with being in front of a, a huge audience like this now, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of kids or people who have watched your shows, been inspired. You know, what have you heard from people who have maybe reached out and told you that, you know, one of your shows might have changed the way they look at things or even changed their life? Well, I always appreciate uh, and love hearing from people. And just the fact that, you know, if somebody enjoys our show, 
it makes me incredibly happy. We had a we, we were doing a show in Hawaii one time, and a woman came up to to me after the show, and she was kind of in tears, and she said, "It was just so wonderful seeing some." She said she could tell that we that we all loved what we were doing up there, and I think she she expressed to me that she was in a in a in a job that she didn't exactly love at the time. And seeing people doing what they love kind of made her think about the importance of finding that for herself. So, you know, that was really interesting. I'll never forget that. Uh, and I hope she found it. I'm sure she did because she was very determined to find that. But, um, you know, anything that we could do, when you see people happy and you see people amazed after a show, there's nothing better. I mean, that's really, that's why I do what I do is to let people forget about their daily lives and for 90 minutes, or, you know, however long they're watching a show, whether it's television or live, just forget about your daily lives and let go and have fun like 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 you're watching a movie, yeah. you know, and th- that to me, that that's worth all the work. It's worth all the traveling. It's worth all the rehearsing, you know, giving people that sense of amazement and seeing that look in their faces and knowing that you're giving people a positive emotion. There's nothing better. So with performing so many shows, how I don't know how fast paced your your show or your themes change or anything like that but i mean does it ever get I, I know you guys are super passionate but does it ever get older to a point where you're like man we've got to change this up or is it more of just you know we're trying to stick with the times and just do something cooler and newer and really blow it out of the water even more next time we're evolving our show all the time uh there, and, and that's for a couple of reasons number one is we're always trying to improve always i mean we've been i've been performing for many years now um and i always tell people it's like it's like um it's like a doctor you want to go to a doctor who's up on all the latest thing and is always you know on top of the 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 trends in his field and knows what's going on i try and i try and do the same with my magic in that i always try and make it as current as i can as new as i can you know as as exciting as i can for today's times um so we're always adding new things into our show. We have two illusions that are being built um, as we speak. And once those are done and rehearsed and, and, and in our show, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll, we'll already be working on other new material. So, so we're always developing new pieces for our show. Yeah, I think that's super important to continue to move forward. And for anyone who's just kind of listening in right, there, right now, what do you say to those who, you know, aspire to leave their job or start a business or get up in front of a crowd and perform you know maybe it's not magic maybe it's music or something else i mean so many of them feel like they're being held back and they it's always an excuse right like there's always some reason that's so minuscule that is holding them back from doing something big Uh, what would you say to them you know if they if they continue to hold themselves back how can they get past that i would tell anybody if there's something out there that you want to do do it you know, absolutely do it. Find your passion and, and follow it because you never want to say, you know, what if, <clears throat> what if I would have tried this? What if I, that was my big motivation even for, for moving from Pittsburgh to Los Angeles right outside of college. I never wanted to say, what if I would have done that? You know, now you have to be smart in your planning. And I was very careful in my planning and I, you know, I try to be very detailed in, 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 in what I was getting into. But that said, if there's something that you want to do out there, absolutely go for it. If I can do it, you can do it. Everybody can do it. Especially in today's world where we're so connected. We're so connected, I mean, with with social media and, and online and, you know, we could reach out to people all over the place and, and make connections all over the place. Um, don't hesitate to go after what you want to do. <clears throat> don't hesitate for, for, for a minute. You know, again, be smart about it. Plan carefully plan, plan smartly, be very detailed in your planning, but go for it and be persistent. And you know what, even if you don't achieve exactly where you want to go, I guarantee you'll, you'll, you'll enjoy the journey and you'll be very thankful that you took the journey. So that's what I would tell people. Yeah, I think that's the best way to think about it is that even if it's not 100%, you're going to enjoy like 99.9% of that. And that's really what matters. Uh, Just kind of like a parting thought as we round this all off here. You know, if someone uh, kind of has the dream to do something, but they're not really sure what to do. uh, You know, I know you were very fortunate to, to find magic so young. What about for people who aren't sure where that next step is? You know, it's one thing to like have the push and take the jump and make the leap. But what if they don't know what to leap to next? 
Well, I think they'll find it. I think, you know what, you need to always be open to, to finding out what that passion is for you. Mm-hmm. But I think you'll find it. I think if you're looking for something, there are so many things out there. Everybody has something. I'm a firm believer that every individual has something that is their thing. You know, my thing is, is magic. Some people it's music. Some people it's comedy. Some people it's business. Some people it's, you know, being great at sports. But everybody has their thing. Be open to it. And don't be in a rush. You know, it, you'll, you'll find, it'll, it'll come to you. It will come to you. But don't be afraid to try different things. You know, just be and have fun with that process. You know, enjoy the journey for all of it. You know, enjoy the journey of all of it is what I would say. And then, you know, when you find it, you will know. You will, just like I told you earlier, there was never any doubt when I found magic. There was there was no doubt. There was there was never any. Well, if magic doesn't work out, I'm going to do this instead. It was just this is what I'm going to do. So, you know, find it, enjoy the process of finding it and then enjoy the process of exploring it. And I'm telling you, you know, it just it even if you never do it as a career, having that in your life, it's it's tremendously, tremendously rewarding. Yeah, I think one of the key things that you said there was that you have to try something. You know, I think far too many people uh, say, OK, you know, I aspire to do bigger and greater uh, and I'm just not going to do anything because I don't know what to do. Well, I think the big thing is you have to try something. You know, maybe you saw an ad in the paper for archery and you just decide I'm going to go try it and you never know what happens. I think uh, that's really what you have to do is look for the random signs and things that pop up in your life. And uh, if something kind of piques your interest, then it's definitely worth checking out. Michael, it's been great having you here today. And I know that you've got a lot of TV shows and things coming up here that you're going to be on. What's the best place for people to check you out and uh, actually watch what you're doing next well i absolutely the best way to connect is is there's several ways so social media by all means connect with me on facebook i'm just under michael grandinetti on twitter i'm grandinetti mg on instagram i'm michael grandinetti and then my website michael uh there's ways to get in touch with us we keep our schedule up on all this stuff um and i always invite people if they have any questions about you know about our projects about magic about following your goals Get in touch. I love to hear from to hear from everybody. And our TV shows premiere this summer uh, on the CW, and you know it's called Masters of Illusion. And I hope people can tune in, and I hope that they uh, I hope they enjoy it. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being here, Michael. I'm actually looking forward to seeing your show. You know, I watched some videos on YouTube just to see what you've, what you've done in the past. It's very impressive, and uh, I definitely encourage anyone else tuning in to to search you as well and find those videos. But thanks for being here today, and uh, good luck with the upcoming show. Stefan, thank you so much, and it was fantastic talking to you. you this was just, uh, you made a half hour just disappear like nothing. I appreciate it very much. <laughs> thanks, man. I guess the magic's still there. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Zeph. Did you like this episode? Be sure to subscribe so that you can tune in next week and tell a friend about the show. If you want access to free training and exclusive interviews on success, happiness, lifestyle design, and adventure, visit me at yearofpurpose.com. Until next time, go out and let life surprise you so that you can live a life rescripted. scripted